Hello world and welcome back to Some Kind of Gaming. You might be one of those lucky souls who still believe that Joy-Con drift is a myth, but sadly to us and many others, it is a very real phenomenon. I don't know if we're just unlucky or what, but all but two of these pairs of Joy-Cons have drift. Now I know it's hard to believe that we don't have this many friends. We have actually had to repurchase these controllers over and over and over again, all because this little thumbstick here just wants to keep moving around on its own. You can send them back to Nintendo to be fixed, but they might be replaced. So if you've customized your Joy-Cons with any skins, or you've got a special edition Joy-Con, you might never see it again. So that coupled with the fact that I'm tired of spending over $100 replacing these bad boys every time, sent me on my journey of discovering a better and more cost-effective way of solving the problem. So if you don't mind potentially sacrificing a pair of faulty Joy-Cons or voiding your warranty, and that is important to note, doing this will void your warranty, then stick with us to find out how to cure your Joy-Cons of drift. Don't forget to like this video if it helps you out and subscribe for more gaming content. Now, I'm not a huge fan of doing fiddly things, but lucky for me, I have a Laura. So she's gonna be the one that takes you through this step-by-step. Step. Take it away, Laurie. Away we go. The first thing you should do if you think you have drift is to just calibrate your Joy-Cons. If the drift isn't too bad, sometimes calibrating them will fix your issues without having to perform surgery. Just go into your settings, controllers and sensors, scroll down until you see calibrate control sticks and then select what Joy-Con you're wanting to test. When you enter into the next screen, ideally you want to see this little green circle in the center of the cross. If your little dot is trying to embark on its own adventure like mine, then you can press X to continue the calibration process. Mine is a lost cause though as you can see, so I have to take some more drastic measures. To repair your Joy-Cons, you're going to need some needle nose pliers. These are optional but they definitely come in handy. A 1.5mm tri-wing and 1.5mm Phillips head screwdriver. The company that I ordered these from accidentally sent me a 2mm tri-wing. From what I understand, a 1.5 is definitely ideal, but the 2mm still got the job done. I also use this plastic prying tool. You don't need one of these, but it came with my kit, so I just decided to use it anyway. You're going to need your replacement joystick, of course, and your broken Joy-Con. You can get all of these things off of eBay or Amazon for super cheap. This joystick only cost me about $10 and this whole kit only cost me about $12. So to get inside one of these bad boys, you're going to have to remove the four screws holding the back plate on with the tri-wing screwdriver. They require a lot of pressure to remove and they strip really easily, so just go slow and if you feel like the screwdriver is slipping, just let it go and reposition it straight away because it is a big pain in the butt if you strip these screws and then you won't be able to fix your Joy-Con. Nintendo doesn't really want you to be doing this stuff on your own, so they definitely don't make it easy for you. Removing these screws is probably the hardest part of the process in my opinion. So just go slow and give it a lot of pressure and you should be fine. Once you've taken all of these screws out, then you can use your handy dandy prying tool or your fingernail to crack her open and you're in. Once you've opened it up, you'll notice that the front and back pieces are held together by two ribbon cables. These ribbon cables are very fragile, so be careful and try not to break them because replacing these is also a pain in the butt. To unplug the battery, you just have to pull the cord straight upwards until it unplugs and then pry it out using either your plastic prying tool or your fingernail or anything that's not metal. The battery is held down by these two little sticky tabs, so you might have to give it a little bit of pressure to get it out, but it shouldn't be too hard. For the inside of your controllers, you're going to need to use your Phillips head screwdriver and remove the top left and bottom right screws. Don't worry about the other two. There's also one in the bottom corner here, so take that out and then the top left, bottom right. The other two are holding the circuit board down, so you want that to remain steady. So at this point, once you remove the middle piece of plastic, you should have three pieces that are still connected. The left side should still be connected to the railing and the right side connected to the ZR button. So to gain access to the joystick, you need to remove this ribbon cable here and this one over here is covering up one of the screws that we need access to to remove the joystick. Removing the ribbon cables is actually pretty easy. You just have to give the tab a gentle flick and then give the ribbon a little bit of a wiggle to get it out. 
This is where the needle nose pliers came in super handy, but you can use your fingernail as well. Just be quite gentle because the tabs are super tiny, you don't want to accidentally flick one right off. Now that these are out of your way, you can start working on getting your joystick out of there with your Phillips head screwdriver. There are only two screws holding it in here, so there's one on the bottom right and then the other one is underneath this ribbon cable on the top left. I don't know why I didn't unplug this ribbon cable before, but you also need to do that before you can get the joystick out. You might have to do a little bit of maneuvering around this little piece of plastic here that's designed to keep dirt and debris and things out of your controller. But now that you've overcome that obstacle, you should be able to put your old joystick to the side so you don't mix them up and start working on putting your new joystick in. Just pop the new one back in its hole with the ribbon cable facing downwards like before and then you can start working on screwing it back into place and plugging all of those ribbon cables back in. It should be a pretty easy process from here on out because we're just basically repeating the same steps that we did before but in reverse. When you're plugging the ribbon cables back in they don't have to go all the way in just line them up straight and give them a gentle push make sure that they're making a connection and then snap the lock back down on top. The one ribbon cable that might give you a little bit of trouble is the one that's connected to the ZR button on the middle piece of plastic. The ribbon cable kind of has a twist in it so you don't want to fight with that twist. Just go with it because it does do a little loop around, give it a gentle push and then flick the tab down. You could just close up your Joy-Con and be done now but recently there has been some rumours coming out that the Joy-Con drift is actually caused by a pressure issue. So if you can see here when I push down on my Joy-Con the little green dot actually does go back in the middle. So I've seen a lot of people experimenting with putting a thin piece of card behind the joystick to increase this pressure. Mine is a little piece of a business card which seems to be an okay thickness because it can't be too thin. If it's too thin it's not going to provide enough pressure but also if it's too thick you're not going to be able to close your Joy-Con. It was at this moment that she knew. She f***ed up. Um, <laughs> so remember before when I was telling you that these ribbon cables were really fragile and to try not to break them? I broke them. One eternity later. I decided not to record fixing my Joy-Con because it took a really long time and I definitely don't recommend following that part of the tutorial. But essentially I took a part out of one of the Joy-Cons that you would have seen at the start of this video. As you saw, a lot of our Joy-Cons had drift, so I had a lot of potential sacrifices to choose from. So I picked my little bag of spare parts, took the railing out of that one and put it in this one. And it was just as much of a pain in the butt as I thought it would be. So moving on from that performance, <laughs> it's pretty easy from here on out. All of the hard stuff is done. You just want to screw all the screws back in. The only thing that might trip you up is trying to plug the battery back in. It's pretty easy though. The cable doesn't slide in or anything. It just goes straight downwards. So if you line the plug up onto its socket and then just give it a push down, it should click into place. When you're closing up your Joy-Con, just make sure that the two ribbon cables are folding inwards and they're not hanging out and going to be sandwiched in between the plastic or anything like that. It might also be a good time to test your Joy-Con before you put the screws back in. That way in case anything's wrong or it's not working correctly, you don't have to take all of the screws back out to open it up again. But other than that, once all of your plastic bits fit snugly together, you'll want to swap back to the tri-wing screwdriver and put those screws back in. And now it's the moment of truth. You might have to recalibrate your joysticks, but once you've done that, go on and see if it has any more drift. Hopefully your little green dot is in the center of the cross for once. <laughs> Before we started filming this video, I'd actually never opened up a Joy-Con to fiddle with its insides. Laura's been the one who's done all of our customization, so it was a real learning curve for me as well. If you did follow along, then hopefully you now have a fully functioning pair of Joy-Cons for around 10 bucks. What a bargain. If you're still tired of Joy-Con drift, but you're a bit too nervous to crack open your electronics, then we do have another video coming up in the near-ish future featuring some other types of controllers that you can use that don't seem to be plagued by the issue. Now to make sure you don't miss out on that video, go ahead and slap that subscribe button down there. And maybe you could share this one with somebody who you know that's suffering from Joy-Con Drift. 
Thank you for watching and as always, you've been watching Some Kind of Gaming. See you next week.